meets and semi-finals. No, I, I think you're right there, David. He's not uh, he's not on top form. The uh, pundits don't see him retaining his title today. Um, he hasn't um, shown too well this season, but you know all that's totally irrelevant. When you get to the final, you're in a different race altogether. So who knows? We'll see. Well, here is the lane draw. In lane one, Canada's Ren Critchlow. He's furthest away from you on picture. Fourth in uh, Duisburg. A couple of seconds off the best. And the significance of Duisburg, Mike, is that that's been the major warm-up regatta before this year. Yes, indeed. Duisburg, in some ways, is, is more competitive than the World Championships because in a World Championship, you only get one paddler per nation. In a regatta like Duisburg, you could have two or three. So the competition there is just as strong as it is here today. Well, coming down the lane order there in lane six, that's Attila Zabo of Czechoslovakia in lane seven now, Miko Kolemainen of Finland in lane eight, the Australian Martin Hunter, the uh, defending world champion and completing the lineup closest to you on camera, Sergei Kalesnik. 500 meters. The individual kayak final double-bladed panel and a number of these competitors will be seeing later on in the thousands meters I also ask you to look out for in lane three the Olympic champion Zolt Gulai of Hungary the court the uh, competitors here really are the best in the world furthest from you Ren Critchlow he was sixth in last year's World Championship. Then in lane two, the American Mike Herbert. He won the Duisburg Regatta as they get away. And uh, a quick start, absolutely vital here, Mike. Yeah, especially with the 500. If you, if you get off to a bad start, the chance of you picking up over this distance is pretty remote. Uh, it's essential to get a good start. And what we're seeing there at the top of the picture is the American Mike Herbert in the uh, blue canoe just being shaded by the Olympic champion in three there. Zolt Gulai. The uh, bow of lane four, that's the New Zealander, John McDonald, the brown kayak. You can just see that uh, about halfway up Zolt Gulai's boat as they come through to the first 250 meters. Coming to the 250 meter mark now, and uh, it looks to be lane three, Zolt Gulai the Olympic champion who's just got the lead there as they come into the 200. 49.31 was his time, but now look at lane nine. This is Sergei Kolesnik. He was the quickest of all in the semi-finals, and he's challenging now for the lead. Martin Hunter of Australia, the world champion, just inside him, trying to make his charge. But it's uh, Kolesnik of the Soviet Union who's got the lead. Challenging him, Hungary's Gulai out in lane three. It's quite close. It looks to me as if it's Gulai now who's still got it from in lane two. Mike Herbert of the United States. Kolesnik, though, has the lead. <laughs> they come to the line there. It's the Soviet Union closest to us. In lane two, it's the American. And it's the Soviet Union, we think, Mike, from America in lane two. I know it's difficult to say that the Olympic champion in three. Uh, lane two stopped paddling first, that's for sure. But uh, whether he was too prep too soon there, I wouldn't like to say it's two or nine. Very close there, Mike Herbert, who got a bronze in the World Championships. Here we go, just coming in now to the line. We can see the replay. The farthest side. And for me, Kolesnik's just got there. He thinks he has, although he's a long way away from uh, Mike Herbert. You never know. <laughs> so the man who was the quickest by just 18 hundredths in the semi-finals looks to have won the gold in this year's 1990 World Championships. The confirmation of the individual men's K1 500, the gold medal to Sergei Kolesnik of the Soviet Union, silver to Mike Herbert of the United States, the bronze to Martin Hunter of Australia.